Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. In this week's special topic in astronomy, we are going to talk about orbital eccentricity and what that means for orbits both in our solar system and beyond. So what do we mean by eccentricity when we talk about that in terms of an orbit? Well, the eccentricity is a measure of how flattened the orbit is. So an eccentricity of zero is a circle. So here we have an eccentricity of zero and we go up by tenths here and then even less to 0.95 here. The closer we get to one, the more flattened this circle becomes. So it's a circle here and then we have various ellipses that are greatly greater or lesser amounts flattened by the amount of the eccentricity. So we can have a, a, again with an orbital planet orbit within the solar system if it was perfectly circular you'd have an eccentricity of zero. Well that's not going to happen. You're always going to have some very slight eccentricity. The Earth's eccentricity is a little bit greater than zero. It's got a slightly so the amount of eccentricity between zero and one tells you how flattened that ellipse is. Now this was given to us uh, by Johannes Kepler, who determined that the orbits of the planets were not circles, but were actually ellipses. Isaac Newton was able to modify that and improve upon it and showed us that there are other possibilities for these as well. And let's take a look at these. And what we have is that there are also are not only circles shown here in red, an example of an elliptical orbit in green, but you can also have unbound orbits. You can have an eccentricity of one, which is a parabolic orbit, just barely escaping outward. So the object comes in and then escapes. It is not a closed orbit where the object would return. You can also have an eccentricity greater than one, which is a hyperbolic orbit shown here in the purple. So we can see those different types of orbits. And this is how Isaac Newton generalized this and that the orbits are not just ellipses, but are actually conic sections. So what is a conic section? Well, you imagine a plane being sliced through a cone and the different things that you can get would be a circle. And we'll see an example of that. That's where this starts when it's the plane is flat and actually parallel to the base you get a circle as you start to tilt that you get ellipses of various sizes so let's go ahead and take a look at the ellipses here so now we're getting ellipse and it's getting more and more flattened as we stretch it down eventually it'll break the bottom becoming parabolic and then finally continue as we tilt downward and become a hyperbolic orbit so any orbits that we find not just in the solar system Comets sometimes have parabolic or hyperbolic orbits, but anywhere else in space would also be one of these types of orbits, possibly perfectly circular, very difficult to get that exactly equal to zero. Generally, you would find that the orbits would be either elliptical or hyperbolic since you need exact numbers to get a circular or a parabolic orbit. So again, that applies not just to the solar system, but to any object orbiting in the universe. So let's go ahead and finish up with our summary. And what we've looked at is the eccentricity of an orbit. Describe how much it deviates from a perfect circle. Eccentricity of zero is a circle. An eccentricity of less than one would be a closed orbit. If it's zero, it's circular. Anything greater than zero, but less than one would be elliptical. And an eccentricity greater than or equal to one would be an open orbit. And that would be an orbit that does not return to the same to the object. So something that comes in and visits the sun once and never comes back again, like some comets. Equal to one parabolic orbit, greater than one hyperbolic orbit. So that concludes this lecture on orbital eccentricity. We'll be back again next time for another special topic in astronomy. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.